I'm Samantha from Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'm Bernard from Swilling J. Henkels. And we're here today to give you a knife demo so you know how to properly use knives. We're going to teach you some basic knife skills and we're going to use the knives out of an 8-piece Swilling Pro block set. And I'm going to show you which knives are in the set. Bernard, before we get started, my first question is what is the importance of having proper knife skills? First of all, proper knife skills make it safer. Then it will save you a lot of time because you become quicker prepping your dish. Okay. And also, um, if you're able to cut in the same sizes, the cooking time is similar, it's the same. So it's even influencing the taste of your dish. Excellent, okay, let's do it. So there's five knives which are in the Swilling Pro block set. One is our Swilling 8 inch chef's knife. And actually, this is the most used knife in the kitchen. Really? Okay. It's for cutting your vegetables, for all your bigger prep work. Then it comes with a small 5.5 inch Sentoku. And that's for your smaller prep work. And it's an Asian style blade. So it's also for a different cutting technique. Okay. Then we have our 6 inch slicer. And as you can see, this knife is half as thick compared to our chef's knife. So it's for slicing and um, carving fish and meat. Then we have our small paring knife. Whenever you're holding your product in your left hand, if you're right-handed, then you're using a paring knife. Unfortunately, a lot of people are using the paring knife for everything they do in the kitchen. And today we're gonna teach you that this is your go-to knife. Excellent. Final line, knife is a 8 inch bread knife okay. and it comes with teeth and we're going to use this one in the sawing motion. Sounds great. First I want to show you something about the Swilling Pro line. This is a traditional 8 inch chef's knife and it's a forged knife so it comes with a bolster part which is this thick part um, but this one has a straight bolster. We improved this 8 inch chef's knife into our Pro 8 inch chef's knife and it comes with a curved bolster as you can see. And what's what's the advantage of the curve? So we're going to teach you to hold your knife in the pinch grip which means your thumb and your index finger are actually on the blade not on the handle but on the blade the other three fingers are loosely around the handle and this curved bolster is perfectly supporting the pinch grip. Huh. Then you can see that a pro knife has a more extreme curve in the tip. This is supporting the circular rocking motion we're going to um, teach you and it has a full edge. Great, okay. Let's start cutting and I'm going to do it in three steps. First, dry without produce. I'm going to show you the circular rocking motion. The tip of your knife should always be on your cutting board. And we're actually going to use the back part of our blade for cutting. Okay. And you should start up. So hold your knife in the pinch grip. That's perfect. Pinch grip. You, you're going to drop your knife, push it all the way forwards, lift it, bring it back, and start all over. Okay, so we're not lifting it up off of the cutting board. No, it should, the tip should always touch has your to be cutting touching. board. Okay. Yeah. Got it. That's actually looking great. And make sure you're dropping your knife all the way and push it all the way forward. All the way forward. Yeah. Okay. So now it's time Ooh. to bring in some produce. I have some celery. Lovely. And a lot of people will put their produce straight on their cutting board. If you want to have a 90 degree angle from your knife, your blade, towards your product, you will notice that your, your body will move. Oh actually. yeah, that's not comfortable. <laughs> If you place your product in a 45 degree angle, you can be steady and straight behind your board. Excellent. So, basic knife skills. The tip is touching your cutting board. We're using the back part of our blade for cutting. Hold your knife in a pinch grip and make a circular rocking motion. Rocking motion. Okay. And as you can see, my produce is really at the back end of my blade. The back end. Yeah. Look at how far up front I am. This is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, let me move back a little bit. How's that? That's way better. Great. Cool. How does it feel? So smooth. And make the full circle. Yeah, great. Full circle. 
And now you're actually using the back part of your blade. Look at that. If you feel like moving your product on your cutting board, use the back of your blade. So you won't dull your sharp edge side as fast. This is precisely why all of my knives at home are completely dull. Thank you for that lesson. <laughs> Knife knowledge. <laughs> so step three will be bringing in our left hand. Up until now, the only thing deciding on thickness um, was our eye. If we're bringing in our left hand, we're also going to feel what we are doing and we have way more uh, control. Okay. So you should hold your left hand in a claw. Your thumb and your pinky should be behind your front three fingers. Okay. And your nails are facing backwards. Back. Great. And now come because we have this scary part is touch <laughs> your front finger with your blade. Okay. And it, you should walk, bring your knife over your produce. Don't push your produce under your blade. Okay, so the produce stays still. Or stays not still, correct. Okay. Yeah. And finger is back. And yeah. Middle finger is foremost. Okay. And you should touch your middle finger with your blade. <laughs> and this way you have control about thickness. You can decide on cutting thick or extremely thin. This is how thin you can cut, <laughs> even with an 8 inch chef's knife. So how does this feel? It's great. It's so smooth. Just need to kind of practice a little bit to get the hang of it. Correct. You know? So I if mean, you I start keep... working in a restaurant, they place you in this corner for the first three months. Yeah. And you're only <laughs> cutting celery, onions and carrots. That's it. <laughs> Looks great. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to move to our next knife which is our small 5 inch Santoku and as I mentioned before this knife become, comes with a straight blade so we're going to make a chopping motion with this knife but also we're going to hold it in the pinch grip so your okay. thumb and your index finger are still on the blade okay we're going to hang on for just a second we're going to switch over to our social media team Nicole and Danielle what do you have for us? Hi. Well, we're just watching uh, live on Facebook, and we have a question from Christina. And Christina asks, are these dishwasher safe? These knives. Great question, uh, Christina. So, they are dishwasher safe, but I don't recommend to put them in the dishwasher. Why? Because your dishwasher has this tremble, and if we have steel on steel in your dishwasher, you will actually damage your edge. Just clean them with hot water and soap, Put them in your knife block or hang them on a magnet bar mm -hmm. and that's the, the way to clean and to store your knives. Okay. Let's continue our basic knife skills. Okay. Our Shantoku knife, pinch straight grip. blade, pinch grip, correct. <laughs> pinch grip, pinch yeah. grip. <laughs> and we're going to make a chopping motion, dropping our knife uh, downwards but also slightly forwards. Forward up towards the front of the cutting board. Correct. Part. Okay. And why? This way we're going to use a longer part of our blade. And if you're using a longer part of your blade, cutting will become easier. Okay. So it should be like this. Degrees. And you can hear the difference now. Now we're actually hear a chopping sound. Yeah, look at that. And you can move forwards. And some people prefer to move backwards. <laughs> but that's just a personal preference. How did it do? That looks <laughs> great. Okay. Chopping and rocking. Two different techniques, but you use them both for the same purposes, for your prep work, for your veggies. You know what, Bernard, I wanted to ask, what are these little ridges? In this knife. So we call them hollow edges and they allow air pockets between your blade and your product so your product won't stick as much. Oh, okay, so they're just ever so slight little ridges. Correct. That's great. Okay. So look what I have. I have a potato. And we're gonna use the basic knife skills we just learned on cutting Brunois and Julienne. Brunois are little cubes and Julienne are sticks. 
from these words, boudoir and julienne? What's it's a French term from ah, the French okay. cuisine. Gotcha, yeah. okay. So I'm going to use my 8-inch chef's knife. And of course, this is round. And first of all, we want to make cutting safe. So we're going to remove one long side. One long side. Great. Okay. And then place your potato on the flat side. Okay. So it's safe. Can't roll anymore. Nope. And now we're going to cut a rectangle out of our potato, which means we're going to remove all the sides. Okay. Start with a tip. This is a larger product, so you can lift your knife, move downwards, but also slightly forwards. Great. So it's and almost try like... to hold your knife again oh, in the pinch, pinch grip. grip. Pinch yeah. grip. Don't forget the pinch grip. <laughs> and we have a question. Yes, actually our uh, customer Meredith was asking if you um, hold the pinch grip for all knives. Basically you do. Basically you do, yeah. Especially with the curved bolster, mm -hmm. this is perfectly supporting the pinch grip and a knife becomes an extension of your arm if you're holding your knife in the pinch grip. Okay. Let's continue with our Brunois and Julienne. So remove all the sides of our potato. So what I was going to say is this is almost like you're skinning the potato, basically, Correct. just yeah. by cutting everything up. So you won't have skin anymore. This is great. Have a little bit left, but that's okay. okay. So it should look like this. A rectangle. And now we're gonna cut three extremely thin planks, like a quarter dollar thick mm -hmm. uh, planks, and then three planks an eight inch thick. Okay. If we do, your eye should be on this side of the blade. Okay. So you so can actually over. see what's happening there. Gotcha. And push downwards and forwards again. So this is the thickness we want to have for the thin planks. Looks great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And if you have three, we're going to take care. <laughs> we can move on to the eight inch thick planks. They should look like this. A little bit thicker. Yeah, a okay. little bit thicker. Great. Okay. And while we're cutting these potatoes, can you give me a little history of swelling? Definitely. Um, we were founded by Peter Henkels um, in 1731, so we're there for like 280 years. So and you know what you're doing, we basically. Know, <laughs> we know about knives, yes. <laughs> and uh, Peter Henkels founded the company in the month of June, and the astrological sign of June is Gemini. Gemini! <laughs> and German swilling means twins. So whenever you see the two men logo, the logo. it's a swilling knife. That's a great story. Okay. So we, we're going to start with the Julienne. Okay. Before we do that, let's go over to Nicole and Danielle again. Mm -hmm. They have another question for us. Hi. All right. So we have Jennifer V. She has two Santoku knives. What, when should she use either one? Which two does she have? That's my first question. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically you use your larger knife for all your big veggies like your squash, your cabbage, and the smaller one for your smaller veggies like your zucchini. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Back to our Julienne. Mm -hmm. 45 degree angle. We'll start with the thin planks. Thin planks. Okay. And of course, in a professional kitchen, they will stack those planks. Today, we want to be safe, so we start, we're practicing, we start with one plank. Thank you, <laughs> for my sake. <laughs> the tip is on our board. We're going to use the back part of our blade for cutting. Okay. And we're going to make the circle or rocking motion. Okay. And just thin little... Thin strips. little... Sticks. And it should look like this. That's actually looking great. It's okay? Great. Perfect. Ooh. Okay. So this is called Julienne. And if we take a thicker plank, an eight inch thick, and again, place it in a 45 degree angle, and we're gonna cut a little thicker sticks. Nice. <laughs> Turn them like Turn this, them. great. 
and then again run the basic oh, knife skills. Little cubes. Little cubes, and that's called brunoir. Brunoir. And those should like look like this. I keep holding it like this. I need to remember to keep my fingers in the claw. Guide, guide your knife yeah. with your left hand. Okay. That way you have a lot of control and it's safe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I did it again. It's force of habit. The top so, of the knife scoops the food. Use the back yeah. part of your blade. So we're gonna clean our cutting boards now. Okay. Because I wanna dice some onions. So how did this feel? It's good. I mean, were I, you using the rocking motion before, or is uh, was totally no, working? not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of like sawing and going at it as best I can. Okay. Onion. Onion. First thing is a lot of people will remove the root part of the onion. Please leave the root on. Okay. We're gonna remove the other side. Okay. Again, using an 8-inch chef's knife, start with the tip, make a downwards and forwards motion to remove this side, great, okay. and now we have a flat side again, so we can work safe, I love that it trick. can't roll anymore. Half your onion through the root, okay. and then we're going to switch to our paring knife, because we're going to hold the onion in our left hand to take off the skin. But still my root is on. Very important. <laughs> it's my first time using a paring knife. Can you tell? Normally you're <laughs> doing that with your fingers, isn't it? <laughs> it's just a little scary. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. You're doing great. There we go. Yeah, great. Also here, we're going to place our product in the center of our cutting board in a 45 degree angle and it's important that the root is facing away, away. from our body. Okay. And this time we're going to use the tip of our knife. And it's important to keep our knife in an angle like this. So we're not going to drop our knife. Do you know why? No, tell me. <laughs> Your, our knife is thicker on this side than it is on the X side. If we drop our knife, our onion will do this, and we want to keep our onion together. Okay, yeah. we're going to go back to our social media team. What do you guys have for us? Hi, uh, Robin H. says, how do you keep from crying when you're cutting onions? Oh, good question. <laughs> Most important thing is use a sharp knife, because if your knife is dull, you will crush your onion, you will crush the structure, and then you have a bigger chance of crying. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, 45 degree angle, we're going to use our tip, we're going to... Cut like this, but stay away a quarter inch of our root. Great. Is that okay? That's right. okay. Great. And only pull out the knife, so don't drop your knife downwards. Get into that position. If you're halfway, you can support with your left hand a little. Good. Great. Yes. Okay. And now we're going to turn the onion, and we're going to make two horizontal cuts. Start up. One and then chew. And don't use any pressure at all. This is a sharp knife. Okay. One. Whoop. Yeah, make a sawing motion. Use a little longer part of your blade, great. Okay. Tip, on our cutting boards, we're gonna use the back part of our blade for cutting, making the basic rocking circular motion. Circle. There he is again. Look at this that. is the perfect way to dice oh. an onion. Really? Yes, Nicole. <laughs> you have a question? Um, oh. Yep, so we're just checking out a question from Cynthia. She wants to you to explain a little bit more about what you mean by using the back of the knife. Is that more near the handle or kind of? Yeah, that? so this is the tip of our knife. There's still some onion on my blade. This is the tip, and this is what I mean with using the back part of our blade. So more towards the handle. Correct. Okay. So let's clean our cutting boards. Okay. Every 
every now and then you can even clean your blade, especially since we just cut some potato and there's a lot of starch yeah. in the potato. So we're gonna move back to brunoise. We're mm -hmm. gonna cut some brunoise of a tomato. And actually a tomato is the best trick to check if your knife is still sharp. Okay. If it runs through a tomato this easy, without any pressure, then your blade is still sharp. Just if you feel that you need to use some pressure, then you should start um, maintaining your knife by honing it or sharpening yeah, it. Yeah, my tomatoes at home just end up in a huge pile of bush by the end of chopping them up. So this is a great test. This is a sharp knife. I need to get some new knives. <laughs> some Zwilling knives. <laughs> okay. So we're going to remove... First we're going to cut four quarters, four yes, hands. correct, then we're going to remove the seeds. Let's cut those out. Beautiful. And make a little sawing motion, again to use a longer part of your blade and then cutting becomes easier. Okay, so you want to stay towards the back. Great. So now pick your preferred knife, either your 8 inch chef's knife or your 5.5 inch santoku. I think the chef's knife. Yeah? yeah. Pick your chef's knife. And we're going to cut first some julienne. Julienne, okay. Again, turn them and cut some brunois. And just a position reminder we have a pinch grip. Correct. Claw. Doing it. Rocking motion. Rocking the motion. Tip is touching our cutting board. And then turning and doing the back. And this could be actually, together with our onion, a perfect start for a delicious salsa. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> and if you're practicing at home, don't go fast. First, make this motion yours. Get it into your system. Slow. Speed will follow. Slow and steady. Yeah, I'm definitely a little bit slower than you. <laughs> I practiced a little yesterday. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it's no wonder. <laughs> Just yesterday, that's all. <laughs> Make sure your board is clean and dry again. I'm making a mess. Because now, what we could do is add some avocado to our salsa using a paring knife to have it because I'm holding the product in my left hand. Score the avocado. Yep. Turn it so you can take both sides off. I have a spoon here. So I'm going to remove the peel. Beautiful. <laughs> and cut it into little dices. And I'm using the chopping motion now because I'm using my small Santoku knife. But again, I'm holding it in the pinch grip. Pinch. Up and down. So let's make this, mix this with our tomatoes. Okay, what's next? What's next is mincing. We're gonna mince some cilantro. Ooh, one of my favorite herbs. And for those of you that have gardens, it's perfect time. August, yeah, we'll have right? some cilantro. Everything is ripe. Okay. Remove the stems. Thank you. Using an 8 inch chef's knife. Chef's knife. First, fold the leaves in your hand like this. Okay. So we can turn it and run it once in the basic knife skill, so the circular rocking motion. Almost 
therapeutic. That looks Just great. Like constant like back and forth motion. I could do this all day. <laughs> and now we're gonna mince, and a lot of cookbooks will tell you to place your left hand on your blade like this. Okay. I don't like it because it's taking away the side of our herbs. I recommend to hold it with your thumb, index finger, and middle finger on the tip. Okay. Place it on nine nine o'clock, and then start. So mincing. much knife knowledge. I love it. <laughs> and this way you can mince it as fine as possible, as fine as you want. And we will see that our herbs are still dry. They didn't get mushy at all. Beautiful. Let's add some to our salsa. So now basically we used four of the five knives out of our eight piece block set. The only knife left is a bread knife. But we have a question. Yes. Hi. Yeah, we have a question from Melissa R. She asks, which knife is best to cut raw meat with? So raw meat, I would recommend to use your slicing carving knife. I will show you that your slicer, this is a six, six inch is half as thick as your, uh, compared to your chef's knife. So it's way easier to run through delicate product like fish and me meat is. Hmm. Thank you. So back to our bread knife. It's a serrated bread knife, it comes with teeth, it's eight inch, and the trick is to use the full eight inch blade. Oh, so I have some bread for you. Thank you. Ooh. Again, this knife comes with a curved bolster, so hold it in the pinch grip. Pinch grip. Use the full length of the blade, start at the tip, and work it towards the handle. Okay. Don't use any downwards pressure at all. Let the knife do the work. So it's, like it's like sawing. It's like sawing, yes. Don't use any downward pressure at all. Here. Just Great. Go. Use the full length of your blade. Ah, uh, it's like butter. <laughs> I can smell the rosemary. Look it how beautiful. So <laughs> Clean cut. And we're sawing. Oh you can also half your breath. Do it like this, that's a little easier to use the full length Which way of is your that? blade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so I have it lengthwise like this. Oh, yeah. I didn't have okay. Huh. So, what we could do is final thing add a little garlic to our salsa. Let's do it. We can never have enough garlic. Clean our cutting boards again. And we're going to go to our social media team, Nicole and Danielle. Hello again. Hey. Our customer, Cynthia, is interested to know if there's any other way she can use her bread knife. Uh, other way or for other things? Yes, other things. Other things. <laughs> so I use, it's a serrated knife, uh, Cynthia, and I use it for everything what's hot on the outside, soft on the inside, like bread is, mm -hmm. but also, for example, squash, pineapple. Perfect to use a serrated knife for that. Mm. Great, thank you. Okay. So we have a glove of garlic and we want to mince it. Okay. So let's get our 8 inch chef's knife, clean it first. And then we're going to remove the back part like this. Okay. Pinch grip? Pinch grip, of course. <laughs> Great. Okay. And now we're going to take our blade, place it flat on our glove of garlic and squash it once. Great. <laughs> okay. And this way it becomes, I'm gonna do it once more, really easy to remove the peel off. in one motion. That's great. great. So easy. And we also already broke the structure of our garlic. And then we're gonna use the circular rocking motion with the claw. With the claw. <gasps> and after that we're gonna mince it 
You almost look like a pronoun. Almost! <laughs> Oh, I have to hold it, right? I was going like this. Hold, hold it, it like this. Like this. Yeah, three fingers, your, your middle, view. your thumb, okay. index finger, and middle finger. Okay. And that's a really easy way to mince garlic. Mm -hmm. How's that look? That looks great. Okay. So now we have all the ingredients for a delicious uh, salsa made of avocado, tomato, onion, some cilantro and garlic. Yum. And basically this is are the basic knife skills. So we used all five knives out of our block set. Excellent. Well, I think that about wraps everything up. Uh, you can get the eight piece pro knife set exclusively at Bed Bath & Beyond. Feel free to check out our Facebook pages, both for Zwilling and Bed Bath and & Beyond. And do we have a question from social media? We do. We have a couple ready to go here. Okay, cool. We just want to make sure we get answered. Yeah. So, uh, Katie M. asks, what's the best way to take care of your knives so they're reliable, durable, and long-lasting? So, um, we talked about how to clean your knives. But, of course, if you start using knives, they will become dull. And that's a little technical story, but this is a fine edge knife. But if you put a microscope on the edge, you can basically see all little teeth. And if you start using a knife, those teeth will roll over and your knife feels dull. And then you should maintain your knife, first of all, using a honing steel. That's for your daily maintenance. You do it a few times a week, depending on use. And then once or twice a year, you should sharpen your knife, which means bringing back the correct angle to your knife because our German knives, they come with an angle of 30 degrees, 15 on both sides. And if you start using the knife, you will round your edge. Sharpening means bringing back the correct angle. Honing is for your daily maintenance. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a couple people asking about what type of cutting board they should use. Um, this is just a wooden cutting board. I prefer wood if you're not working in the food service mm -hmm. because that's there it's not allowed to use uh, wood. You need to use plastic. But this is the perfect hardness for your swilling knives. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Uh, and then we just have one last question from Amy. She asks, I thought you were supposed to use a serrated knife for tomatoes. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. So yes, you can also tomato Hard on the tough on the outside, soft on the inside, and then you have a five and a half inch serrated utility knife, which works perfect. So you could even use your bread knife. It's a little big for tomatoes, so I would recommend to use a smaller serrated knife for that. All right, we have one more. Uh, <laughs> it's from Pam. She says, "Isn't it easier to just use a garlic press?" Um, <laughs> I don't like cleaning my garlic press, <laughs> so using my chef's knife is the easiest way for me. Um, clean it, uh, mince it, and then it's really easy to clean my knife. Great. Okay, I think we can wrap it up now. Um, Great. Like I said, like us on Facebook, both Zwilling and Bed Bath & Beyond, and that's it. Show us some love in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. See you next time.